Hi, I'm John Davis, composition and mixing instructor at Point Blank, and this Garage Band tutorial video is going to give you a basic flavour of what you could expect on our Logic Pro courses. For more info, you can head to pointblankmusicschool.com to find out more about our Introduction to Music Production course, plus many more that we offer in London, LA, Ibiza, Mumbai, and of course online. So when you open up GarageBand and choose a brand new project, the first thing it'll ask you to do is to choose a type of track. Now I'm going to spend the next 10 to 15 minutes creating a beat idea using mostly software instruments. If I wanted to plug a microphone in, or plug in my electric guitar, or even use the new drummer feature, I would just select the relevant track. As I said, for now I'm going to select software instrument and hit create. Now it opens up a panel on the left and a panel on the bottom, more on those later, but the main thing that it does is creates a brand new track here, using Logic's classic electric piano sound. This is a sound borrowed directly from Logic, although GarageBand presents it in a slightly less complicated and streamlined interface. In fact, if you've ever opened up Logic, you'll see that GarageBand looks surprisingly similar, albeit with a lot less buttons. And that's because essentially it's the same program, but with a lot of the more advanced features removed. And this is great for getting started with Logic. You can even create songs in GarageBand and then open them in Logic when you feel like you're ready to take the step up. For now though, we're going to work exclusively in GarageBand and I'm just going to start by throwing down some chords. In my advanced composition class this week, we've been looking at jazzy extended chords. So I'm going to play a chord progression that uses some of those for you right now. I simply move my pointer up to this record button, press it and we'll hear one, two, three, four, then I'll play. Cool, that sounds about right. Um, and now I don't really need to see the library open here, so I'm going to shut it using this button. And the smart controls at the bottom don't need to see them either for now, so I'm going to close them as well. But what I would like to see is the editors button, and I can open that using this little scissors button here. Now I notice that every time I hover above any one of these buttons, it tells me what the keyboard shortcut is, and I'm going to be using a lot of keyboard shortcuts throughout this video. I see the keyboard shortcuts for the editors panel is E, so I'm going to tap E and hey presto, the editors panel opens for me. Now I'm just going to see what this sounds like. It's the space bar to uh, start and stop playback if you want to get some of these keyboard shortcuts under your fingers. Now that sounds pretty good to me, although it's a little bit separated and I want to correct that. To do so, I'm going to simply select all of these notes and I'm going to extend them like so. Let's see how that sounds. Sounds pretty good and my timing was actually not bad, although if I was to zoom in then I'd see that some of these chords, like that fourth one, are slightly ahead of the beat and I can solve this by pressing this little Q button here. And that's just going to lock them or quantize them to the grid. Now I could leave these chords as they are but We've also been looking at voicings in our advanced harmony class and I want to change up these voicings a little bit. And a quick little tip to create interesting voicings on your chord progressions is to simply select any one of these notes and try transposing it up or down an octave. I'm using another keyboard shortcut to do this. And what I want to get is just an interesting kind of chord shape with some interesting smooth movements. I've kind of done that more by eye than by ear, but let's see how it sounds. Yeah, I think that sounds about right. Before I park this, I'm just gonna go up here and open the smart controls and just fiddle around with some of these buttons to change the sound of the electric piano to get the slightly psychedelic sound that I'm after. Yeah. 
Yeah, that sounds fine for now. So let's create another track. I'm going to go up here to this plus button and I'm going to create another software instrument track. Next, I think I'll add a bass. I could go here to bass, which would pull up a load of bass guitar sounds, but actually I want to add a synth bass. So I'm going to go to the synthesizer option and the bass subcategory there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one, the Agile Synth Bass, and fiddle around on my MIDI controller. And I'm just going to click on different instruments until I find one that I like the sound of. I want to go for something a little techier. Let's try this hard tech bass. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, and if I'm happy with that sound, I can go to the record button again, and I'm just going to record my bass line straight in. Okay, that sounds fine for now. Again, I'm going to double click on the region and I'm going to select all of these notes and quantize them once again, just to make sure they're super locked to the grid. Let's see how that sounds. And that sounds fine for now. So before I get stuck into my beats, I'm going to add one final synth sound and I think I'm going to add some sort of lead sound. Again, I'm going to go to a new track up here, new software instrument, yes please. And this time I'm going to go to synthesizer and lead. Okay, so I'm going to select one of these now and see how that sounds. Actually, it doesn't sound so bad. Uh, do you know what? I think I'm going to go with that first one. Sounds fine for now. And I'm going to record it in. But before I do, I'm going to go over here on the right hand side and press this arpeggiator button. And what this is going to do is re-articulate any note I play in quite a fast, repeated way. Like so, I hold down one button on my MIDI controller. And Logic plays a rapid fire burst of notes. Not the most inspiring arpeggiator pattern, but if you go here, I can find something a little bit more in keeping with my track. Bouncing funk, that sounds about right. Let's see how that sounds. And that's just holding one note on my MIDI controller. That sounds fine for now. Um, I'm not even going to bother going up to the top to that record button for now. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut R. Here we go. Now, my timing wasn't actually that bad, but because the arpeggiator needs to be really precise, a lot of those sounded like they're in the wrong place. Sounds like another job for Captain Quantize. So actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to try a different quantize value. We spend quite a long time talking about different quantize parameters in the logic course, but for now, I'm just going to stick with that as it is and see how it sounds. <laughs> That sounds okay. I might try actually taking this lead line and getting it to align with the rhythm of the bass a little bit more. I'm just going to hide the library because we don't need that. And if I zoom in on both of these windows, I notice that my bass falls slightly before the downbeat of bar two. And I'm going to try putting my lead line there too. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds a bit better. Uh, and I'm going to do that in bar four as well. Just neatening up this line a little bit to make sure there's not too much overlap between the notes. Okay. Just one note that needs neatening up there a bit. Okay, and that is cool. And I'm actually going to do the same thing on my chord pattern as well. I'm going to get this second and fourth chord to just push a little bit ahead of the beat, like so. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> Yeah. 
Okay, so that's since done. I'm quite happy with that little pattern. Let's add some beats. Once again, I'm gonna hit this plus button there, add a software instrument again, and this time I'm gonna find electronic drum kit. I'm actually gonna go all the way to the bottom of this list because I know that this trap door kit uh, has the kind of punchy, trappy sounds that I want. And as before, I'm gonna hit R, wait for four, and then play my pattern in. Okay, that sounds about right. Now I'm gonna double click on this region to open it again. Don't need the library. And select all of these drum beats. But before I press this quantize button, I'm gonna find a kind of swing setting. Yeah, that sounds about right. And there I have my basic beat. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna layer up some of these drum sounds to make them sound a little bit fuller, a little bit punchier. And I'm gonna start with the kick. So I'm gonna create a brand new drum sound. Yep. And go over here to electronic drum kit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to record in a kind of four on the floor drum pattern. Uh, and when that's recorded in and quantized, I'm gonna find the sound that best complements my existing kick drum. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I think my kick drum could do with a little bit of punch and a little bit of subby energy. So I'm just gonna try and beef it up a little bit. Now, I've only recorded a one bar pattern, but what I can actually do is I can hover above the top right hand corner and this loop the loop button allows me to loop any little region I've got going on. And the keyboard shortcut for that is L, which I'm pressing, toggling on and off there. So let's see how that sounds. I think that sounds pretty terrible. Don't know about you, I don't think those sounds go together at all. Nope, no sorry. Okay, I need to find a completely different sound. Beat machine, let's try that. And that sounds much better. Now, I press this solo button to just audition these tracks in solo mode, and I can see what my original drum pattern sounds like, and then what it sounds like with this additional kick doubler. The only thing is, this kick doubler beat machine it's called, is a little bit toppy, a little bit clicky. And it's really important that it doesn't detract from my existing kick drum. So what I'm gonna do, hide the library, is I'm gonna open up the smart controls and I'm gonna start adding a tiny little bit of mixing effects. Now we're not gonna get too much into mixing today, but if I just hover above this EQ button, I'm just gonna show you a quick little technique that you can use to make a kick drum that sounds like this sound a little bit more mellow. Now I'm gonna go over here to the top right hand corner and grab this high cut filter it's called and you can hear the difference when I drag that down. And back up and back down again. It makes the drum a lot mellower. And that's exactly what I want when combined with my trap door kick drum. Not sure if you can hear a difference, but if I take this filter up, it sounds a lot raunchier if I pull it down. And I don't need to pull it down all the way, just about here. So it's complementing but not overpowering my initial kick drum. Awesome. So I'm going to do exactly the same for my snare. Why should kick drums have all the fun? And I'm going to go to electronic drum kit and I'm going to choose quite an aggressive snare drum sound. And I know that this dub smash has quite an aggressive snare. I'm going to unsolo these so I can actually hear what I'm playing. That's the one and record that in on top of my existing pattern. Now when I'm 
programming precise beats like this every single time I'm going to make sure every beat is quantized like so and I'm just going to start doing that without even thinking about it. Let's see how that sounds. I think it sounds good but I think the snare is far too loud so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it all the way down good little mixing technique this and I'm going to gradually raise the volume until I feel like it's adding to my existing snare but not overpowering it. That sounds about right to me. Now I'm going to add one more element to my beat and that's going to be some sort of 808 clap sound. In my electronic drum kit bank, I have a boutique 808 kit. And it sounds a bit like that, which is exactly the sound I want. Let's record that in. Cool. And as always, I'm going to go down here, select all of these notes and quantize it using the same 16 swing setting that I quantized my kick drum to, to make sure those lock in. Okay, so far I've shown you how to create software instruments from scratch, but there is another entirely different way of creating music in GarageBand. If we go to the top right hand corner, this little icon that looks like a loop the loop, this is the Apple Loops browser. And if I click on this, it'll show me 15,406 different loops. If I click on any one of these, All sorts of different bits of audio recorded in a variety of genres, moods and instruments. Now I'm going to go to the vintage breaks genre and I'm looking for something that's going to sound good over my drum beats. It's just going to add a little bit of energy in the background so that sounds perfect. I'm going to drag it in where it says drag Apple loops here uh, and I'm going to find another one. I think there's a kind of cowbell funk break somewhere up here. There it is. That sounds pretty good and I'm going to add those two together. Let's see how that sounds. Well it's certainly got a lot of energy but it sounds, I think you'll agree, like a bit of a mess. So the first thing I'm going to do is tidy this up a little bit using a little mixing technique employed by dance music producers of all genres and that is to cut the low end out of my breaks. Uh, so that sounds pretty good on its own but there's a lot of energy in the low end that is really cramping the style of my main beat which sounds a little bit like this. So what I want to do is take some of the low end out of this track, like so. So that it only adds the sparkly high end to my beat, but doesn't get in the way of the punchy kick drum. And I'm going to do that on the cowbell funk break as well using the EQ setting. I'm just going to do it very quickly and roughly by eye for now. And hopefully you'll agree that especially the cowbell funk break sounds a lot better with all of the low end taken out. This is before. I mean, it sounds all right, but it just sounds boomy and messy. And after. Okay, so these are starting to sound all right. Now, first of all, I'm going to take the volume slider of these two tracks and pull them right down because they're still way too loud. I don't want them to overpower my beat and that sounds a bit better. Now, I might use this pan control which sends a sound to the left or right hand speaker. And that sounds okay. 
But actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you uh, a little mix trick that I've been showing some of my mixing students this week. Uh, instead of simply spreading these two percussion breaks out like so, I'm gonna add a plugin. Now a plugin is any little audio effect, kind of like a guitarist might have a distortion pedal. So a music producer has uh, a load of effects plugins that they can add in this little slot here. I'm gonna to go to delay and sample delay and I'm simply gonna offset one side of the guiro funk break and I'm gonna do the same with my cowbell funk break. And hopefully what you'll hear when I've done this is that these two are gonna really slot around my main beat. Here's without, and back with. It's a very subtle mix technique, so don't worry if you can't hear it, but these are the sorts of things that we would discuss in the mixing course. Okay, so last but not least, it's time to arrange this track. Now I wanna create a very, very quick arrangement. It's gonna start with an intro, it's then gonna have some sort of drop, and then finally it's gonna have an outro. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with my electric piano and my bass and my lead part, and I'm gonna have them looping, like so. I think I'm gonna add my clap sound in here, halfway through this build up to add a sense of building, and then I'm gonna add a drop in bar nine. Now, I'm gonna keep the bass and the lead part going throughout the drop, and probably throughout the outro as well and I'm gonna have my electric piano sound stopping at the beginning of the drop where these drums come in. But if I hold the Alt or Option key and move this region to, oh, let's say halfway through this drop, then it's gonna copy the region rather than just move it. And I'm gonna loop all of my drums to make sure they go throughout this little drop section like so, even the clap. And let's see how that sounds. Sounds okay, but to be honest, I'm already getting a little bit bored and that's because there's not a huge sense of building or momentum. And to add that final sense of shape, I'm just gonna show you a couple of quick tips using automation. Now automation is something that we look at in detail in the logic and mixing courses, but I'm just gonna give you a little flavor of what it looks like here. Essentially, automation allows us to take any sound and get it to change over time automatically, as the name implies. For example, I could take this bass, instead of coming in really punchy at the beginning, I could open up the controls and say I went to, I don't know, the EQ, I could get it to come in really light and soft like this. And then as the intro is happening, I can automate this filter to go up or down wherever I fancy. And to do that, I simply press A, find the parameter in this new drop down menu that's popped up. I'm gonna to go to channel EQ, low cut frequency, and you can see how complicated you can get with these things. And I'm gonna draw this little line in here. And what this should do is help my bass to really stand out when it drops in. And you can see when I'm playing this, I've programmed it to drop down right where my drums come in. And I'm gonna add uh, another lane of automation. I'm actually just gonna automate this sign option. Now this is basically gonna allow me to have a little bit of a sub fatness on this bass part. Let's see how that sounds. Yep, yeah, cool, that sounds fine. And then I'm definitely gonna get rid of that at the end to make the part a little bit more mellow again, 
like so. And I think I might even have this drifting all the way up so it gets really light towards the end of my track. So light you can barely hear it. And I'll probably have the bass finishing round about there. Okay, I'm going to do a similar thing on my clap part. Now my clap part kind of comes out of nowhere. And if I look at the various controls I can automate, I have this reverb option here. And basically, I'm going to add a load of reverb to the clap part as we go into the drop, like so. And that should just make it sound a little bit more dramatic. And I'm also going to add a little bit of delay right there. Just to make it sound really dramatic going into this drop. And I'm going to get that coming back down when it drops. But then at the end of the drop to give a sense of drama again, I'm going to automate both of these sounds like so. I'm doing this pretty quickly. You can take your time at home. Last but not least, I think I'm going to automate this lead sound. So here I have this decay option that I think might be quite a cool thing to automate. And I'm going to start that all the way at the bottom and then come down all the way to the bottom at the end. And hopefully that's going to sound pretty cool. And you can hear how that sound has opened up over the course of eight bars from really small to really big. And that's exactly what I want. Let's see how that sounds. some of those lanes of automation um, if I had a bit more time but I think you get the general idea now the last thing I want to show you is tempo now my tempo is 120 beats per minute and to be perfectly honest with you I feel that this track is dragging a bit and I'm going to do the age-old thing of speeding it up a little bit just to add a bit more energy from 120 to 130 beats per minute let's see how that sounds <laughs> And there you have it. It's not a finished track, but it's certainly getting there. And hopefully that's given you a bit of a glimpse into the sorts of things that we look at in our longer production and mixing courses. Also, hopefully what I've done is given you a sense of how powerful GarageBand can be. Sure, it doesn't have the fidelity that Logic has, but a lot of Logic's most powerful features are actually presented right here in GarageBand in a streamlined and easier to use interface.